The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to London Dairy Presbyterian Church online Sunday service. And welcome to another blessed online gathering to worship the Lord our God. Let's listen to today's announcements. We are planning to have our 2 p.m. social gathering today at the parking lot if it doesn't rain. So just bring your mask, your own water, a chair, and a hat because of the sun. It is so healing to see each other and chat. Everybody's welcome. This week we have the lamp lighters, the women's uh, meeting through Zoom. It's going to be Thursday. So we will send you the Zoom invite. Please save the date, Thursday, August 27 at 7 p.m. Now, our task force for reopening the church has met and it is working to try to find a safe and reasonable way to reopen our sanctuary for in-person worship. There is a lot of information, guidance to sift through that is change, changing every week, week to week. So, but we, we will get there and we'll let you know. Now, I would like to thank you all for your faithfulness in sending your tithings and offerings through mail and, or in our parking lot mailbox. For our friends who live far away, you can help LPC by sending your offerings through PayPal. You can access our webpage lpcnh.net and click on contributions via PayPal. It is that easy. I even tried it. PayPal charges a small a little fee, but it makes donate, donating much easier. And that will help us. It will save our church during this time. So let us thank and dedicate our offerings to God. Gracious Lord, with great joy we present our gifts from the ministry of this church. Be with each of us as we also commit ourselves to lives of joyful, thankful, and compassionate service. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us worship the Lord our God now. Please listen to the word of God in Romans 12, 1 to 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God mercy, God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, word or world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this Friday, our grandson Ben turned seven. He is a young man of God. And he surprises me with his loving and kind heart at, at, a, at such a young age. Every holiday or birthday, graduation or so, because it is difficult to send a gift to Hawaii, friends and family send him money or gift, gift cards. He is very wise and saves his money in a little box for whenever he wants something that is expensive for his missionary parents to buy. He had saved in his box, in his little box, about $100 to buy a bicycle. But when the pandemic struck, he heard that many families lost their jobs and were experiencing poverty. They are missionaries, my, my daughter and her husband. They're not rich at all. But Ben took his little box and said to his mom, Mom, here, I want to donate all my money to help children to have the food to eat just like we have. You see, you don't have to be musical to have the heart of worship. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, eternal one. You are the Lord. Guide us into abundant life in you. Help us to worship you in spirit and truth. Give us a heart of worship, we ask in your name. Amen. Today we will work basically on verse 1 of Romans 12. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. In order to truly worship the Lord our God, the most important part of our body that we need to offer to God as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Him, is the heart. By the heart, I mean the intellect or mind. The heart is the center that controls our whole body. Are we using our intellect to glorify God? Are we using or filling our minds with holy and clean thoughts or ideas that please God? In this world, how can we keep our minds holy? As believers, we have to recognize that God must take center stage in our lives, including mind and body. We need to tell God, my life is not about me, me, me. It's all about you, Lord. But we have to mean it. Not just sing it. We have to mean it. For every time our ego, our self, speaks high, God is put on a shelf, and it is not, He is not glorified through us. We have to really want to make our heart holy and to be determined to change our hearts and renew our hearts. We must commit to it. Paul tells us on verse 2 not to conform, conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And only then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For God to take center stage in us, we need to feed our mind. We need to feed it with the Holy Word, the Word of God, the Bible. It is in the Holy Word that we find out that we are loved with God's amazing love. In one of my devotionals, 
Billy Graham, Billy Graham says, and I'll quote, Many people go through life feeling unloved and unlovable, perhaps criticized or ignored as children, or their family was torn by conflict. Perhaps they made bad, bad choices about important issues in life, which are only confirm their belief that they were unworthy of love. And then Billy Graham exclaims, and I can see him doing that, but listen, I have good news, says Billy Graham. No matter the reason, your feelings aren't telling you the truth. God loves you. And if you begin to see yourself the way God sees you, your attitudes will begin to change. Let me repeat this. God loves you. And if you begin to see yourself the way God sees you, your attitudes will begin to change. If you are still not sure that you are loved, please go to 1 John 3, 16, the first part, A. This, it says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. This is love. Now we feed our minds talking with God, praying. When we establish the habit of praying and chat with the Father in heaven, we create an intimacy with Him in the spiritual realm that is priceless. We also can feed our minds, our hearts, with worship music or Simply good music that lift up the spirit. We do not have to listen only to hymns or worship music. Any happy music will be good if it has calming lyrics rather than bad and denigrated words. Songs of peace rather than war and anger. Good music is an amazing tool used by God to lift us up. We also feed our minds, our hearts, with doing good things rather than bad things, helping others. Someone said to me today, it was Beth, I was talking to Beth, and she said, I love helping people. It's good for our hearts. People help us and they feel good to help us, helping us. That she's true, she's right. So you will know that when things are right or wrong, right away. And then you ask, how do I know what's right or wrong to do? When you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit abides in you. And the Holy Spirit shows you the good and the bad. Sometimes we feel in the Spirit that the choice we are about to make is bad. But our ego speaks louder than the spirit. And we do the bad anyway, even if we feel bad. We go and do the wrong thing. Other times, we want to do what's bad so bad. But the spirit pokes us, bothers us. And we end up doing what's good. And that feels good. We feel so in touch with God. Now, what about our mouth? The mouth is directed, directly linked or associated with the heart or mind. In Matthew 12, 34, Jesus says that the mouth, mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Some people are always sweet, gentle, kind, and encouraging when they speak. 
Now, for what others told me, if we did a CT scan of Nancy Wimmer's heart and mind, we would see that her heart was infected with gentleness, kindness, and love. And it definitely showed whenever she opened her mouth to speak to anyone. So many people told me about her gracious being, her kindest being. When we cannot control our mouth and we swear or we yell and mistreat, no matter who, with bad or hurting words, it means that our heart is full of hurt and dirt. And if so, there is no space left for God in there. We have some cleanup to do when this happens. When our heart or mind is filled with goodness, love, and God's direct blood, uh, when our heart is filled with goodness, with love, and God's directives, our mouth will mainly produce words that bless or lift others up. It is very important for the mind to be in sync with God and to have God in the center of our life because the rest of the body responds to the heart through action. The heart that loves the neighbor with the love of God, the love, love agape, acts. And we as a whole react with actions of loving kindness. With God in control of my heart, it is much easier to walk the talk. Being a living testimony of God's loving kindness is much more effective than just preaching it. If I live, it's much better. Finally, let each one of us check our hearts now. Ask yourself, is COVID-19, politics, or any other situation in life steering up bad feelings in my heart, leading my mouth to speak or my hands to write that what my heart is full of? Is there any lack of love, also called hatred, anger, frustration, etc., that I would like to see changed in order to renew my heart to a heart of worship, where God, stay, God would take center stage. That's two things that we have to check in our lives right now. I can assure you that it can be done. God, God take, can take center stage. So our challenge this week for us is, first, to commit to God our willingness to change and work on renewing our hearts, thus putting God first, either by spending time with God or filling our hearts with good stuff rather than bad stuff. Second, to react and act. Our neighbors everywhere are experiencing fear, grief, uncertainty, poverty, and all kinds of needs. What is it that you have saved in your little box that you can share with your neighbor in need? And I'm not talking about money now, but the treasures and richness of the heart of worship. What can you share with your neighbor? How are you helping your neighbor? With a heart of worship filled with God's love, you can make a difference. Amen? Amen. Let's pray the prayers of the people in the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, we ask you to heal those 
known to us today who suffer from illnesses of any kind. Soothe those whose bodies ache and calm those with fevered minds. Give us a heart of worship that we can be living testimonies of your love to our neighbors. Lord, we ask you to take all the requests of our heart into your healing, blessing, and caring hands through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I would like to send you out this week with a prayer of Reverend Dr. Richard Bott, moderator of the United Church, a prayer that Helen Walker emailed me this week that is very appropriate. He starts saying, as a, as a prayer as I put on my mask. Creator, as I prepare to go into the world, help me to see the sacrament in the wearing of this cloth. Let it be an outward sign of an inward grace, a tangible, invisible way of living, love for my neighbors as I love myself. Christ, since my lips will be covered, uncover my heart, that people would see my smile in the crinkles around my eyes. Since my voice may be muffled, help me to speak clearly, not only with my words, but with my actions. Holy Spirit, as the elastic touches my ears, Remind me to listen carefully and full of care to do all those I meet. May this simple piece of cloth be shield and banner, and each breath that it holds be filled with your love. In your holy name, and in that love, I pray, may it be so, may it be so. In other words, amen. Go in peace. I love you and miss you all. All right, ready? One, two, three, four.